Minglawa, if I ask you what our architectural identities are, what would you say? Bagan? Mandalay Palace? Shidagom Pagoda? Yes, Google will agree with you. The first 20 images that came about what I just said, they are our identities of the past, still associated with us in the present. I'm very proud of our rich cultural heritage. They should not bind us from creating new architecture that reflects who we are today. We have to advance, we need to transform. We have to ask ourselves how can our culture stay relevant in today's world where global influences are huge and our resources are scarce. Are we going to be defined by the past only or are we going to create new designs with our own values so that our arts and architecture can flourish in the future? I want to tell you what matters to us. Culture, context, building science are the core principles that should shape the way we build for Myanmar. And I invite you to come along the journey of discovering those identities in my work. When I was asked to design new cottages at a resort in Inay Lake, the first question I asked myself and my client was, what kind of experience do we want to deliver? We believe it has to be uniquely inlay that captures the essence of our traditions and values. So I was looking for images that yells, this is Myanmar. And I came across this 20th century painting that depicts our environment and our past memories so well. This is Royal Plowing by Ceremony by Sayacho. What inspired me is not the architecture that you can see in the painting, but the setting itself. Set against a mountain, the ceremonial ambiance is captured by the people surrounding the entourage, especially those uniquely dressed officers who underline the entire landscape. These cottages are meant to evoke those quintessential Myanmar characteristics. The inside experience is also uniquely Myanmar. No electricity. <laughs> Relying on natural daylight was our only options, preferred options for sustainability. So we designed skylights and clerestory windows for privacy, large windows towards the lake and the mountains for views. During the day, these windows brighten up the interior. And the high ceiling, which took the shape of the roof spire, also helps with natural ventilation. Inna people built their houses on stilts in water for so many generations. They hammered down wooden locks 15, 20 feet to the bottom of the lake without the help of any machine. It's this type of construction that gives this resort a unique inlay atmosphere. The cottages also have all the amenities of a modern living, such as enclosed toilets, shower, bathtub, and sewage system that digests and discharges clean, safe, nutrient spill water back to the lake. But I have to admit, this is not a transformation yet. The nostalgia for the past is still lingering. I had a dream after this project. I was drowning in Inle Lake. I looked up and I saw the bottom of a boat that I think was trying to save me. All I remember was falling it and emerging in a large empty room. And that room happened to be the lobby of a building I was designing in Yango. My client and I were perhaps discussing about ceilings, lights, fixture, etc. And chandeliers were proposed. And I said, no chandeliers. Let's build something that others can buy. So this happened. They are like those strange but familiar boats in my dream. They attract your eyes from the steps of the entrance to the reception lobby. This random dreamscape came to define the interior character. I'm sharing you this because we all have different experiences that propel us to create things that we never imagined because of our attachment to a certain place or a certain person or a certain belief. I'm sure you've heard about the story of a king in Bagan who dreamed about a cave in India and built a temple. Yes, our dreams can be strange, but they are homegrown. 
At least they are not imported from China or Singapore, who we compare our stuff to often these days. Originality gives us stories to tell, and they are our own stories. Sometimes characters develop from unique, meaningful, functional elements. This hotel facade is not facing directly to Sri Lankan Pagoda, but its windows are. A typical window will simply be punched through the wall, but a controlled attempt to angle it frames the view towards Sri Lankan. It is small because it's far, but it's a gesture of reverence to what we have in our surroundings. By orienting ourselves to the cultural landmark, we are orienting ourselves spiritually within the building through these windows. Functionally, you can also see that the angle wall blocks direct sunlight 100% during the hottest day of the year, which is around April 12th. Combining it with other design strategies such as horizontal shading, vertical louvers, and double glazing, the direct sunlight hitting the interior is reduced to about 30 to 40 percent average the whole year. These passive design strategies reduce the cooling load of air conditioners, thereby lowering the energy consumption of the building. This contextual approach generates the building's identity with meanings and function. Another opportunity came to me in Inlay to add a new wing to the resort. This time, I wanted to experiment. The inspiration comes from the butterflies of Inlay. They are playful and fun. They, their wings became the unique identity of the duplex cottages. They complement the landscape of rolling mountains and waves. The form may be new, but the construction methods still rely on Inda people. It is a deliberate intention to preserve the knowledge of silk construction in water, provide jobs to locals, improve their skills, and expose them to modern design. They are the DNA of what makes this contemporary design an Inda's creation. You can also see them come and go by boats from their villages to their construction site. And aren't you jealous? They have no traffic. <laughs> But the form, however, is just a frame we live in. To instill it with our cultural notion of sharing, friendliness, togetherness, I made an addition to the cottage, a kupye room. The idea comes from kupye, or a raised platform. Attached to traditional homes where families and friends gather to chat, to share moments, eat la pat, or in this case, talk about fish because it has a glass bottom to observe them. We removed lounge chairs completely. This is intentional. By doing so, we made the kupye the place to sit because it absorbs nature. And deliver you a unique experience of living in Inlay Lake. The culture of Gupye, which is about sharing the space equally with everyone on the same platform, should mean something to the egalitarian society we desire to build. We must continuously find ways for our traditions and culture to be integrated into modern living. The way we design will shape the way we live. I want to share a quote by Kenzo Tenge. Japanese architect. I want to share a quote by Kenzo Tenge, a Japanese architect. He said, "Quote: The role of tradition is that of a catalyst, which furthers a chemical reaction, but it's no longer detectable in the end result. It's not about rebuilding the past, but building the present that looks towards a future of endless possibilities." Our design must be informed by our past, our culture, and our way of life. The identity for Myanmar will not be singular. Our union is so diverse that we must cherish and draw inspiration from the many differences that we have in our country. Our collective identities, though, should be about respecting nature, 
understanding context, and applying the knowledge of building science for sustainability so that we can create an environment of happiness, responsibility, and togetherness for our society. Those are the qualities that we should seek for in developing identities for Myanmar. But here's the catch. You have to hire architects, especially Myanmar architects. <laughs> so go hire them, work with us, and let's build a future where our culture not just survives, but thrive through the transformation of our minds, our soul, and our architecture for tomorrow. Thank you.